Hi, Tube Dude here. Welcome to my little video on uh, catching perch in Willard Bay, Utah during the fall. That's a really fun sport and hopefully uh, we can uh, improve your learning curve and catch some more perch after you, after you see this thing. Uh, video is going to be several parts. First couple of parts are mostly just uh, pictures, charts, graphs, diagrams, and uh, uh, rhetoric. Uh, the last part of fish porn will be uh, some actual fish pictures catching the fish on, on the different lures and baits and techniques that, that we uh, uh, cover in the rest of the overview. Let's first of all talk about Willard Bay Reservoir. A lot of my videos are on Willard Bay Reservoir and I've got a few fans around the uh, around Utah and around the rest of the company, country that don't really know a lot, a lot about Willard Bay and would like to know a little bit more. Well, first of all, uh, Willard Bay is about 10 miles north of Ogden, uh, right along Highway I-15. Uh, it was created back in 1964 by diking off a part of the Great Salt Lake, pumping out the salt water, and then refilling it with fresh water. Uh, the dike's about 36 feet high. Uh, ended up with about a 10,000-acre lake with 215,000-acre feet of water. Fresh water comes from the Ogden and Weber rivers through a canal system that's maintained by the water users. There's two uh, Utah State Park recreation areas around the lake that have uh, boat ramps, camping facilities, and other amenities. Uh, but there's several places around the lake that you can access the lake and fish for free. There is good year-round fishing for several species. And uh, uh, the, the perch fishing and some of the other fishing is best in the fall, but there's also really good ice fishing, uh, good fishing in the spring, uh, really good walleye fishing during the summer. So just something for just about all year. Uh, here's a map uh, showing Willard Bay and how it's located. This is the Great Salt Lake, and this is the arm of the Great Salt Lake that they diked off and made Willard Bay Reservoir out of. Runs along I-15. It's about 10 miles north of Ogden down here and a few miles south of Brigham City. And uh, it's real easy access on and off. A lot of good fish in, in uh, Willard Bay. Uh, Utah D Department of Wildlife Resources has done a really good job of, of uh, introducing different species and managing them so that there's plenty of fish of plenty of species just about all year round. One of the most popular is the wiper cross between white bass and striped bass. Uh, they average about three to five pounds in Willard, but they get up over 10 pounds. Walleyes, uh, lots of walleyes. Uh, DWR now maintains a, a program of spawning and stocking, uh, which keeps the walleye population up very good. Uh, crappie, always been a lot of crappie in, in Willard, but they fluctuate a lot with the water levels. Uh, they have to have a high water level in the spring to flood some brush and, and structure to make it possible for them to spawn well. So after low water years, there's a decline in population. Lots of catfish throughout the lake. Uh, average probably 18 to 20 inches, uh, but they do get up to, to 30 inches. And there's a lot of them, and there's a big part of the year that the catfish are the mainstay of the fishery. Bullheads, not many of them in the lake. They wash down from Pineview. And they will hit uh, the stuff that you're fishing for the other fish occasionally. Smallmouth, lots of smallmouth in, in Willard Bay. Again, they originally washed down from Pineview Reservoir. Found the rock dikes all around the lake. Uh, really good habitat because there are a lot of crawdads in the rocks. So uh, a lot of guys come out and fish just for the, for the smallmouth and do very well. Not as many largemouth bass, but there are some. Since they're more structure oriented, uh, you'll probably catch more of those inside the harbors than, than around the dikes, but you can catch one almost anywhere on occasion. Uh, some nice bluegill in Willard Bay. Not as many as there used to be, but there's still some good ones. Same thing with green sunfish. Used to be a lot more of those until the wipers find out uh, they make a tasty substitute for shad when the shad aren't big enough to eat. This is the primary focus of this video, which are the perch, yellow perch, and uh, they get big in, in Willard Bay, and there's a lot of them. Uh, the average during some days is about a foot long, and they get up to 15 inches, so they're well worth pursuing. Of course, there's other species in the lake, too, like carp and, and uh, several species of minnows and that type of thing, but 
they're not important to the fishery. What is important to the fishery is the gizzard shad. Uh, these were originally planted as a forage base uh, for wipers or anything else that DWR wanted to put in. And a lot of people don't know how big these things get. They got 18, 20 inches long, weigh two to three pounds, but they're illegal to keep and they're illegal, illegal to use for bait. So you got to throw them back immediately when you catch them. So we caught this one on a little crappie jig and immediately threw it back in the water after it posed for a picture. These are the sizes that are important. Shad spawn over about a two month period in the spring. And uh, so there's a lot of different sizes of shad by November. Uh, the big ones are almost too big for most fish to eat. And the, the very smallest ones are just ideal size for perch and crappie and some of the other smaller predators. But the small ones have not developed enough in November to be able to eat anything besides zooplankton. And water temperatures drop down below about 50 degrees uh, the zooplankton start dying out, and then the baby shad uh, die out when they starve to death. It's not the cold water that kills them, it's starvation. You'll know when this starts to happen, you'll get down there in the morning and you see a lot of terns and seagulls flying around over the water, swooping down, picking up the remnants of the little shad that died during the night and floated to the surface. you also see a few of them washing up along the shoreline. And this is what a lot of the predators are keying in on for the short time. And uh, it's a good idea to uh, be able to, to simulate these uh, with your lures and your bait. And there's a lot of times uh, you'd be fishing something like this uh, little blue and clear sparkle crappie jig. And uh, perch will mistake that for a shad and eat it. And actually when you're fishing for the perch, uh, since all these other species are in there feeding on the same thing, They'll hit the same lures and baits, fish the same way in the same areas, so it's not, not uncommon in the fall to have a mix of uh, perch, wipers, and cats. There's some days you go out and uh, you catch mostly perch, but you end up with a nice walleye or two, and that's not a bad thing. There's some days when you don't even catch any perch, but uh, there's a combination of a, a nice wiper, a nice walleye, and a nice, nice uh, crappie, even though I didn't catch any perch that day. Now, on a really good day, you catch a lot of perch and nothing else. So uh, any day you go out, it's, it's a new day. It's a biblical system. Seek and you shall find. Maybe. Okay, let's uh, talk about the perch history in Willard. I've been fishing the lake since 1977, and I had uh, never caught any perch until after about 2005. We had a heavy snowpack winter in 2004-2005. And a uh, heavy runoff overfilled Pineview, it spilled. And since it was just uh, really full of small perch at that time, there were a lot of perch that got washed downstream into Willard Bay. And it didn't take too long for them to start showing up on uh, uh, hooks and baits being meant for other species. And within a very few years, we started catching some larger ones. And the perch found out how tasty the shad were and uh, uh, ate a lot of shad and reproduced. And at present, we have a, a, a pretty pretty big population of a very large perch and uh, we catch them throughout the year but the best time is in the fall and we'll talk about that. Where and how to catch perch? Well we'll talk about the best areas of the lake, uh, some of the techniques to use like low and slow or vertical jigging, uh, tackle basically you want to go light and sensitive, lures uh, use small but deadly, uh, metallic colors are good, hot colors are good. Baits, uh, minnows, cut bait, worms, a lot of things will work, uh, although there are some that work best, and we'll talk about those. This is a map of, Utah, of uh, Willard Bay Reservoir in general, and uh, the good news is there are perch all over the lake, and you can catch them almost any time of the year on any lures you're fishing for the other fish. But during the fall, which is the subject of this little dissertation, the area around the North Marina, Freeway Bay, and around the South Marina, they're the most popular with the regulars, uh, the perch jerkers, but um, uh, uh, there are more and more of them. They're heading across over along the West Dyke and finding good schools of perch over there without as much pressure as there is around like the North Marina, for example. Let's talk about the North Marina. Uh, like all areas of the lake, uh, the fishing is uh, dependent a lot on water levels for the year, water clarity, water temperatures, uh, food resources, and all that. 
but when the perch are in they can be really thick and the most popular spot for the uh, boating perch jerkers is out here in the extended channel that comes out from the uh, the marina and uh, there's a little it's a little deeper in the channel and a lot of times you'll find the fish in the deeper part but there's plenty of other times you'll find them up on the sides and shallower part on either side and so it pays to use your sonar and look around uh, make a big S turns until you find the find the perch and then you spot lock or, or anchor over them and vertical jig them. When the water is deep enough, 12 to 14 feet, and water temperature is right and there's shad inside the harbor, you'll find a lot of perch inside the harbor too. And that can be really good fishing. Another good spot to try is what I call the Kitty Condo. That's about 200 yards off Eagle Beach and uh, it's a series of humps and bumps which is an old roadbed and uh, usually a lot of catfish out there but during the fall it also attracts some schools of shad and uh, the perch and the other predators that follow them in. This is a picture outside the North Marina about a week before it froze up. I think the air temperature was about 15 degrees on that day. You can see the water temperature on the sonar is only 35 degrees so it won't take too long for that to cap. Now it's a good news bad news situation uh, in that situation. The bad news is it's colder than heck. You got to wear gloves and use hand warmers. But the good news is all the fair weather fishermen stay home so there's not as much pressure. And if there's more shad dying off and more perch coming in, then there's more fish for fewer fishermen. Now, once in a while you'll head into an ideal day. This was Thanksgiving Day uh, 2022. I was out there all by myself, nobody else on the lake and uh, the perch were in very thick and so usually you catch one here and one there and think that's a pretty good day on that day i actually got several doubles had a total of probably 75 80 perch for the day went through three full bags of minnows ran out of bait before i ran out of fishing normally when you're fishing just outside the marina and the north marina you'll you'll have uh, lots of company but the good news is the boats uh, are usually either spot locked or anchored so they're not moving around a lot and nobody bumping into each other and you don't hear a lot of uh, colorful language floating across the water and it's kind of a social situation when the fish are really in everybody's catching fish and having a good time now if you don't like all the company out there and, and there are some fish inside the marina which there are sometimes uh, you can go back in. I've, I've been in my float tube back there all alone just catching the heck out of perch while the guys outside are, are fighting each other for a relatively small number of perch. So uh, it's always worth prospecting inside the North Marine and seeing if the fish are in there and if they are then uh, work them over. Now way out off Eagle Beach I mentioned uh, the Kitty Condo. Uh, this is a perch caught out, out in that area one year. You can see the Eagle Beach is about 200 yards back in there so it's well worth prospecting. Now from the North Marina you go south to Freeway Bay and this is the freeway that runs all up, all up alongside the lake so that's why they call it Freeway Bay. Like the rest of the lake it starts out shallow and goes deep as it goes progressively out so you look for the depth of the water where the fish are holding, find a school of fish, spot lock it and work them over. The next area going south is the South Marina area and it's a lot like the North Marina from the standpoint it has a channel dredged out from the main entrance and a lot of times that's where you'll find most of the perch is right along in that channel but you can also find them up on the shallower banks on either side just uh, again use your sonar do s turns find the fish spot lock them and catch them and then we've got a kitty city out there which is like the kitty condo of the North Marina uh, some humps and bumps that attract the shad and the perch, so well worth fishing. This is a picture uh, shooting up the South Marina entrance early in the morning with sun glare, but this shows uh, the channel marker buoy, a fish coming in only a few yards off the buoy, shows the east dike and the mountains, and this is out off Kitty City. Uh, this is a perch caught way to heck out off the shoreline, about 200 yards. It shows the East Dyke. Now, I was fishing for catfish with a uh, pink uh, pink tiger flag and a piece of uh, minnow on it. And uh, then a good way to know the cats are, or the kitties are in, or the perch are in there when they start biting on the stuff you're fishing for the catfish. How do you find the Kitty City? 
go outside the North Marina, look for the uh, tower at the feedlot, and then just go out about 200 yards and start using your sonar to find the humps and bumps and the fish that are hanging out on it. And it's well worth uh, well worth the effort sometimes. There's almost always cats out there, but uh, when, the, when the perch are in, uh, there can also be some really good perch action. Okay, let's talk about uh, perch fishing factors. What can we do to increase our, our catch and uh, shorten our learning curve? Well, obviously we have to consider the time of the year and what the fish are doing at that time of the year. If they're in spawn mode, we're probably not going to catch many because they just don't feed at that time. But the good news is there's, most fishermen aren't fishing during February, March anyway. And uh, it's too darn cold and some of them are concentrating on walleye. Uh, also, uh, during the year, you consider their feeding cycles. What are they feeding on and where, the, where is that located? What is the fish activity level? Are they active, neutral, or negative? Uh, you'll find that out pretty quick if you're seeing them on sonar and not catching them. Uh, w uh, some of the things that affect the activity level are the water depth, temperature, and clarity, uh, the amount of fishing pressure. Uh, the more fishermen that are fishing a, a small area for fewer fish, means that uh, your chances of catching a lot of them are greatly diminished. And what are the weather patterns? Uh, perch are really influenced by uh, fronts, wind, and other weather anomalies. So all those things you take into consideration. Here's an example of a big fat female perch laden with eggs getting ready to spawn late in the season. Most of the big perch that you catch are going to be females and are almost all going to have eggs. But earlier in the year, they're not quite as not quite as fat and they're still lean and mean and you probably catch more of them on more different things. What do you do when you're looking for perch? Well use your sonar and first of all look for balls of these little uh, the smallest shadlets. Uh, the, bigger per the bigger shad by now uh, are kind of dispersed throughout the lake and they're holding more at mid depths. There's not as many of them balled up near the bottom as there are the small ones. So that's what you look for. And you also look for uh, predator marks nearby. These are what I call perchy marks. Cause that's that's what there were some perch there, and you want to find groups of them because uh, when there's a school, they're a lot more competitive and a lot more likely to hit a bait to keep the others from getting it. Now, if you've got a good sonar with a side scan, that helps because uh, you're not only looking underneath, but you're looking off to either side. And in this particular screen, it shows a couple of small groups of perch off to the side that I was able to move to the side, find the fish, get over them, and fish them vertically and catch some fish. If you got one of the super sonar systems that are on the market now, it's amazing the size of the schools of perch you can find out there if you could do some diligent searching. Uh, but uh, I don't have that technology. What are the fall perching techniques you should be using? Well, we mentioned vertical jigging. Uh, that's almost universal anymore. You can do that either from a float in a boat float tube or kayak or from the docks. But you can also do it from the shoreline if the fish are in close enough that you can reach them with a long cast by using a slip bobber. And we'll talk more about that a little later. Uh, earlier in the season, when the fish are more active, you can catch them by casting and retrieving lures, uh, jigs or spinners, a uh, wide variety of lures they'll hit. Uh, you can catch them by still fishing, by uh, chucking and chancing it, soaking a bait on the bottom waiting for the fish to find you. Or you can get out and drag around a bait or a lure uh, using a bottom bouncing rig or whatever. Most of the regulars on Willard, I call them perch jerkers, uh, they use a spot lock or anchor to get out and, and uh, set up over an area where the fish are moving through constantly. They're very seldom you'll find one school that will stay in one place a long time. Willard just doesn't have that kind of structure to attract the fish and hold them. So the fish move through, and if you can find a fishy highway, you can uh, get periods of great activity, catching several fish at a time, but then you'll have long periods of inactivity at some times too. But don't get impatient and move. If you've got a good spot, stay there. Uh, when you're fishing vertical, keep your rods horizontal, either balanced on the uh, bow of the on the gunnel of the boat, or in a, in a really good rod holder that you can put the ends of the rod in and out very quickly and you can strike quickly if you need to. Uh, this guy doesn't have a, an anchor that I can see and he doesn't have an electric motor so I question whether his spot lock is really working. My float tube, I don't use an anchor 
and I don't have spot lock, so I've got to throw out a marker buoy and use my fins to maintain position. But uh, it works pretty well until the wind comes up. Now, should use uh, light rods for perch fishing. Uh, they don't have to be these small ice rods like I've got in my hand. A six and a half, seven footer is a lot better in most cases. But one of the other things I want to illustrate here is some guys like to hold both rods in their hands, and that's not always the most effective. Uh, it's usually better to either keep both of them in, in uh, rod holders, uh, keeping the, the lure fairly motionless, and then occasionally picking one rod out and jigging it a little bit. First of all, to maintain uh, position above the bottom, but second of all, to attract a strike from a fish that's just been eyeballing it and hasn't been motivated. Surprising how many strikes you get when you pick a rod up and wiggle it a little. Fishing inside the harbor, you could either use a boat to pull up inside the, the boat slips or fish around the outside edges, or you could even tie off to the docks. Or you can use a um, flotation device like I use, float tubes, uh, pontoons, kayaks. Uh, again, you can find the fish on sonar and then work them over. Once they remove the boats from the private docks, they usually uh, also open up the gates and let the public fish off the docks. And again, sometimes you can find good schools of fish right off the docks. Again, the key to ver vertical fishing is keep the rod horizontal and keep your bait within a few inches of the bottom because that's where the fish are feeding at this time. And they're, like, they're fishing down rather than up, uh, which is unusual. A lot of fish uh, feed up and set it down. Uh, an option to the fore foregoing system is to rig up with a drop shot rig, <clears throat> putting your baited lure a few inches above the bottom, above a sinker. Uh, that helps you maintain the bottom a little better sometimes, but it's not always the best rig. <clears throat> and then there's a slip bobber rig. Now this takes some practice and experience to get get it rigged right and keep, keep your uh, baited lure at the right depth. But once you master it, it can be very good, especially for uh, fishing away from your boat or offshore. I like to drag a bait around once in a while. Uh, I usually use a floating jig like a flig, uh, a few inches above a sliding sinker, and a piece of worm or a piece of uh, minnow on it, and sometimes it can be very effective. Here's the rig I usually use. I call it an upshot rig. It's kind of a modified ca uh, Carolina rig, but a uh, small, small floating jig with a piece of worm or, or fish meat on it will catch you a lot of fish. This is a more of a true Carolina rig with the longer leader and that works good earlier in the year but when the fish get down near the bottom or staying near the bottom you're a lot better off with the shorter leader model. <clears throat> here's an example of a fish caught on the upshot rig with a short leader and here's one on the longer leader. They do bite both. Another way to present a bait uh, fishing from your float tube is what I call the open bale system. I fish with either a hole minnow or a big chunk of night crawler uh, with no sinker, just dragging it across the bottom about 30-40 feet behind my float tube very slowly. Have the bale open, the line tucked under a line clip. When a fish takes it, he pulls the line out, <coughs> pull lines, pulls line off the bale. You pick up the rod, close the bale, point the rod at the fish, wait till the line comes tight, and then set the hook. Very effective on uh, catfish and, and uh, uh, wipers and walleyes at times, but even perch will intercept the bait that you've been uh, trying to catch the other fish with. As I mentioned earlier in the year, when the fish are more active, you can throw jigs, and a good combination is to drag a bait and pitch jigs at the same time. I like the little tandem tube jig rig, uh, baited with a piece of worm or a piece of a piece of minnow, and either reel it slowly above the bottom or lift and hop it, give it a little action. And if you get into the school of perch, it's not unusual to catch two at a time, and uh, that's always a lot of fun. Okay, we talked about uh, small baby dead and dying shad being the primary food base for the big perch during the fall run. And uh, this is the stomach contents out of one large female perch. Uh, she was a real glutton. They, uh, they will glut pretty heavily on these, these little things. And it would seem that having some small shad would be the best way to, to fish for them. If, but it's illegal to use them for bait here in Utah. However... Uh, small shiner minnows, small chub minnows, uh, pieces of cut fish flesh uh, like from perch. As long as it smells right, uh, a lot of times you will get hit. Now, also using lures that look a little bit like shad can appeal to their to their visual. Uh, this little blue and white 
crappie jig sometimes catches perch pretty well. However, uh, they'll also hit something that looks nothing at all like a shad if it's got a piece of mineral or perch meat on it, uh, something that smells fishy. This is a fire tiger flag. This is a traffic light flag that also had a whole small minnow on it. Doesn't look anything like, like a shad. And perch will also hit worm baited lures. Uh, this one hit a horley flag that was baited with a piece of worm. This one hit a whole minnow that was being fished for uh, probably wipers or, or catfish. I think I showed this picture before. During the summer, uh, during the uh, the prime time for walleyes, uh, the post-spawn period from uh, oh, about late late May through early July, walleye will just run, walleye just go crazy in, in Willard, and a lot of guys are fishing for them with crawler rigs. And uh, as often as not, you'll find a, a big perch on the crawler rig. They don't read the directions that it's supposed to be for walleye. And during a good part of the year, uh, fishing small tube jigs for other species like crappie or other other fish. Uh, We'll also catch a few uh, perch. Uh, you notice in the picture this is during the warmer months of the year because there's no gloves on the hand. But here's that same red and chartreuse jig in the mouth of a perch when the water temperature is only 36 degrees. So they will hit, uh, hit jigs and worms all, almost all through the year even though minnows are often the best bait. Here's that same red and chartreuse jig with a little whirly blade flag on it, a little airplane blade, I call this my pistol pat. Uh, they also like the little pony jigs with the little spinner blade on them, also known as road runners. This is on a gold with orange spots. Here's one with uh, chartreuse with a red eye and a piece of worm. Uh, here's a, a wobble jig and worm. This is a uh, pale perch finish. There's a fire tiger crankbait that was either being cast or trolled for walleyes. And uh, again, the perch don't always read the directions. Here's a perch on a perch. Here's one on a fire tiger twister, three inches, with a uh, pony jig head. Here's one on a uh, pearl color uh, shad bait, probably being fished for wipers when they were in uh, heavy. Now, even though they're not any trout in Willard, uh, here's a trout finish paddle tail that uh, has caught all species of fish in Willard, including perch. What are some of the best perch, perch baits for Willard? Well, as we mentioned, small shiner minnows, small chub minnows, cut pieces of larger minnows, uh, pieces of perch meat, and the ubiquitous nightcrawler. I get my own minnows uh, with a cast net and a couple of fish baskets and then I separate them out by size and I usually uh, separate out a bunch of the small minnows for use with the uh, for the perch later on in the fall and I either fish them whole like this or if they're a little bit larger I may cut them into pieces all you need is a smell you don't need a whole fish but if I do use a whole one I'll either head hook it through the head and around the spine or from the tail I'll hook it around the spine uh, if they've been frozen and they get a little bit soft, this helps hold them on the hook a little better. Here's an example of a small minnow that's been tail hooked on a dropper jig. Here's an orange tiger dropper jig with the uh, minnow hook through the head and around the spine. This is a flattened metal jig with the little whirly blade on it. Uh, again, showed the hook through the head and around through the spine, and always with the hook point exposed. I'll point that out. You always get a lot better hooking if you leave the hook point exposed. Here's that same small minnow with the tail being cut off. Uh, that serves two purposes. Number one, it reduces the size of the profile. Number two, it puts more scent on the water. And perch really are scent-oriented sometimes, uh, to the point of not even caring what it looks like as long as it smells right. If you're fishing a whole large minnow uh, for other species or for perch, and if they're fairly fresh and they're not too soft, you can hook them through the collar as you drag them across the bottom for a natural presentation. But you don't always need a natural presentation. You can hook them for, uh, through the back and around the spine. And this is good because a lot of the predators, including perch, will work the minnow around and swallow it head first. So you get good hookup by fishing it this way. This is one tail hooked. And using bling beads, 
that works for a lot of species. Even silly perch will gulp it down if it looks good enough and smells good enough. If you're going to use perch meat for bait, first recommendation I'd make is to scale the things first. Uh, when those scales dry out and get hard, uh, they're like Kevlar. You can't put a hook point through them or you can't pull a hook out once you got it in. After that, you flay them. Remove the rib bones from the flays. And then at that point, you have the option of either freezing them whole or cutting them into pieces and freezing them. Uh, I usually uh, freeze them whole and then take them out the day before I'm going to use them and cut them into whatever bait size pieces that I want. Again, worms are kind of a ubiquitous bait for perch anywhere and they work good in Willard almost all year so regardless of how you fish them either just a plain piece of worm or whether you tip a jig with a piece of worm uh, it's good to have them in your arsenal <clears throat> okay we've uh, talked about some of the best baits for catching perch in the fall on Willard Bay let's talk about some of the lures that work the best for uh, presenting the baits and uh, down in the lower right hand corner you'll see the three initials BDS that stands for bait delivery system and that's all lures really are uh, they don't work nearly as well by themselves without a piece of bait on them now small lures are better than large at this time of the year and in some cases they'll never hit a, a large lure during the day metallic silver or gold are some of the best colors uh, because they best re represent the dead and dying little shad that the perch are feeding on. Hot colors are good uh, for attracting. Hot red, orange, green, chartreuse. This past year for some reason uh, pink, uh, pink and silver has been especially good. There are bright color patterns that a lot of us are familiar with like the fire tiger. Uh, one of my own patterns, the chartreuse perch. Another one, the traffic light which is a takeoff on the old Wonder Bread pattern. I use uh, bright bright green spots instead of blue spots on it. You can add uh, small spinner blades on your lures for additional flash and vibration and uh, also there's the dropper lures which like the old Halley jigs and the newer Johnson spoon use a little short chain between the body of the lure and the hook and uh, that gives the fish the impression theoretically that uh, he's getting away with a piece of bait that's not attached to the lure. Of course, they let them think whatever they want as long as they hit it, right? A lot of the perch shirkers on uh, uh, Willer Bay swear by the tungsten jigs, and that's about all they use in some cases. And they usually catch plenty of fish because the fish are always uh, up for slurping on a smaller bait where they're not always up for uh, attacking a bigger bait. They can be pretty finicky. Johnson snare spoons, we talked about those. Uh, they use a little chain between the body of the lure and the hook and uh, they can be very effective. Uh, you can use almost any kind of jig head to get a piece of bait down near the bottom. I make all my own and, and paint all my own so I have a variety that I use. If you're going to be using a jigging spoon it's hard to beat the old Acme Castmaster. They come in a wide range of colors. Uh, a lot of them will catch the perch but the, a good choice is either the silver or the gold uh, because they better represent the dead and dying baby shed that the perch are feeding on. If you want to kick it up a notch, uh, you can put a little stick on eyes on there to get, make them look more like minnows. If you want to really dress them up, uh, get some prism tape and put some strips or stripes or dots or, or whatever on there to add a little extra flash and color. This shows uh, the old super duper lures. They've been around a long time and they still work very well for perch shooting too, but I chose this picture because it shows them with some prism tape on them. If you pour your own jig heads like I do, you can uh, come up with some interesting variations. Uh, this quarter ounce head is designed to go on a two out, three out hook and be fished with big plastics. But I pour it on a little size four hook and it makes an ideal uh, perch jig in terms of weight and size. Plus it's got a perfect horizontal hold which puts a hook out to the side with the hook pointed upward. You get a lot more good positive hook sets that way. Another good horizontal hold is what I call teardrop jigs. These are actually uh, tube jig uh, from a tube jig mold. Uh, they're designed to, again to go on larger hooks and to go up inside of a large uh, plastic tube jig. But uh, they work just fine like this and are a good, good uh, acceptable substitute for a 
uh, for a tungsten jig if you don't want to spend the money on tungsten jigs. I flatten the heads on a lot of my jigs, uh, gives them a little wider profile, allows you to do more uh, creativity with the paint, and uh, gives, also gives them a little flutter uh, when you jig them or drop them toward the bottom. Ultra Minnow is a uh, jig head that I've used for a long time and really like it especially for fishing for the uh, perch. Uh, it's got a natural fishy shape, uh, but uh, the real appeal is the fact that the lure eye is right in the middle of the weight. So it's got a perfect horizontal hold, and when you wiggle and jiggle it, it rocks back and forth, and uh, that can be a seductive motion for perch too. I make twirly jigs by adding little propeller blades, add a piece of wire onto the hook eye, and then put the propeller blade on. These propeller blades are great because they spin at just the slightest movement, and uh, they uh, uh, twirl both on the lift and the drop. So they add a lot of flash and vibration, and that can bring in the fish from uh, uh, a little further distance away, especially if the water is kind of murky. Variation on that is I pour some jig heads with wires up the middle, and instead of attaching the spinner blade to the hook eye, I put it in the front of the jig. And uh, these are on uh, uh, flattened teardrop jigs, and they work very well. A variation of that is I call them buzztail jigs. I put the little spinner blade at the rear of the uh, rear of the jig he uh, jig head, and uh, those work very well. Now, in truth, I've tried them all; they all work. I uh, can't say definitively that one works better than the other, but it's always good to have a variety and let the fish tell you what they want. Talked about dropper jigs, uh, the old Halley jigs, and uh, the newer Johnson snare spoons. Uh, they rely on a, a little piece of chain between the body of the lure and the hook and uh, They've been working good for 50 years. They still work, but they're originally designed just for perch and that's fine, too But in Utah, we've got some big toothy critters and sometimes uh, the Bigger fish will get their teeth tangled in that chain and either break it loose or, or get off one way or another I've been using the little number six wire between the lure body and the hook I've never yet lost a fish that I can attribute to failure of the wire, and it doesn't bother the fish at all. They they love it just fine. A lot of uh, Utah anglers never leave home without wobble jigs anymore. They become uh, pretty popular, and uh, because of their unique sh uh, shape and action, they're kind of a triple threat. When, uh, because of their shape, when you drop them toward the bottom, they flutter and wobble from side to side. Or if you lift them slowly toward the top, they wobble from side to side. If you snap them up, uh, then they zigzag. But if you let them sit motionless, then they have a perfect horizontal hold with the hook pointed up. Again, for more sets of the hook and the, and the roof of the mouth of the fish. And uh, that'll, that'll land you a lot more fish than if you hook them in a soft part of the mouth. That pretty much ends uh, the, the dissertation with the pictures and the diagrams. Now let's get into some uh, fish porn. Uh, this will be about 10 minutes of edited down clips showing the different species, uh, the baits and the lures, and how we rig them. And I uh, had a lot of fun putting it together. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, that shows how I uh, vertical jig for fish uh, from my float tube. Have two rods held horizontally, the line straight down, marker buoy out there to maintain position. If I'm back in the harbor and dragging flags, uh, trying to find individual fish or, or schools, uh, rods are still in the horizontal rod holders, going about a third of a mile in an hour. When I rig minnows on my jigs, I normally hook them through the head and around the uh, spine. If they've been frozen, they're a little bit soft, that's a lot better way to keep them on the hook if you've got some uh, uh, bait stealers. A lot of times it's a good time, uh, good idea to cut the tail off the, uh, the minnow to, first of all, reduce the size of the profile, second of all, to put more scent in the water. If I go outside the North Marina and I find more boats and fish, uh, that's my cue to go back inside the marina. Uh, where I can find more fish than boats and uh, sometimes have some pretty good fishing without a lot of competition. Here's a nice one I got on a uh, blueback silver buzztail flig. And I'm going to pause it right here, uh, about ready to catch a double. And uh, 
don't always catch doubles, but uh, when you do, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Watch the rod on the left. I've got a fish coming in on the right. Watch the rod on the left as it takes a, a dip. Yep, got one on the left, set the hook, put it back in the left rod holder, continue to bring the one in on the right. That's a nice fish. Put the rod in the rod holder, pick up the other rod, make sure the fish is still on there, it is. Keep cranking. Bring the second fish up and in. No net required. And there you have a pair to draw to. That's a nice couple of perchies. Okay, the next segment is kind of a instructional thing on, first of all, be very careful you don't get red all over your fish uh, by not getting a hook in your finger or by not cutting your hand on the sharp, uh, sh sharp surfaces on the, the gill covers or getting spines in your fingers. That can just mess up your whole day and painful for days afterwards. Here's the North Marina. See the buoy out in the background. Bringing in a nice perch on uh, one of my ultra minnow jigs. Quarter ounce with the uh, blue back and silver belly. Yellow eye, looks a lot like a little uh, baby perch. Been very effective this year. Uh, lay him down to see how big he is. Uh, 13 inches is big enough to keep. Got another one coming in. This was on an experimental lure at the time. Uh, a little teardrop. Actually poured it on a uh, uh, tube jig mold and then put a smaller hook in it. it turned out to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good lure for, for uh, perch jigging. This particular model was a hot green, uh, which I made in several colors. And this hot green I made also with uh, both a yellow eye and an orange eye. They both work. This one coming in is one of the bigger perch I've caught for quite a while out of Willard. Uh, it was big enough that uh, put up a good battle and caught both the lines tangled. Had to be really careful in uh, handling it and getting it unhooked and measuring it and all that kind of stuff, but uh, well worth the effort. Finally got down on the board and <clears throat> came out about 15 inches, which is the uh, biggest perch I've caught out of Willard for a long time. Darn nice fish. Here's using my little uh, ice fishing rods up at the North Marina. Bringing in a nice perch on a orange tiger dropper jig. Dropper jigs work really good sometimes. This is hooked right in the top of the mouth, which is ideal. Getting to pose for the folks back home and show on the bumper board that he's uh, 12 and a half inches. Big enough to keep, by golly. Again, another little ice rod bringing in a perch on a pink tiger dropper jig, which has been a good color. Still got some minnow attached on the hook. It's not the biggest perch I've caught for a long time, but uh, definitely goes in the basket. Third color uh, dropper jig that's been working very well is a chartreuse and silver with a red eye. Uh, don't know why, but uh, very attractive to perch as well as other species. Uh, this perch is coming in on a one of my flattened jig heads on a uh, minnow jig uh, with silver glitter. That's good if you want a, a smaller profile, but still the appearance of a minnow. Got another nice perch coming aboard. Uh, this one is on uh, one of the new hot color lures, uh, pink with silver. See my marker buoy on the right there? That's a uh, pink and silver uh, ultra minnow. It's been a really good lure for both perch and catfish. Bringing another perch on the chartreuse, chartreuse and silver ultra minnow. Uh, again, that's been a very good color. Had to get him in and uh, get him to pose for the folks back home without getting stuck with all the spines. And now we're fishing up at the North Marina. And uh, this is a non-perch species. But since I have no pride at all, I gladly welcome a wiper aboard. And uh, actually it's a lot of fun on that little ice fishing rod. Took the uh, same orange tiger dropper flag jig that I'd been... Uh, using on the perch and uh, like the minnow just fine and uh, hold him up getting to pose for the folks back home definitely not going to throw him back he, he definitely went in the basket good fish good eating too okay now we're getting into some catfish 
they don't really belong on a perch uh, program, but uh, it's almost impossible to fish for perch anywhere in the fall without catching a few catfish on the same lures and the same baits in the same areas and the same techniques. Uh, here's a nice catfish caught on the uh, uh, silver sparkle whirly flag, whirly jig. Same, same jig I've been catching perch on. And uh, darn nice fish. Uh, very good eating this time of the year in the cold water. Got a big catfish hooked here that I got on a flag while I was uh, dragging it by the end of that do uh, boat dock. And uh, while they're normally pretty chilly in the cold water, this one came up and uh, did a little splash to show off. And uh, then we settled down to a knockdown hand to fin battle for a while. Finally got him in ready to come into the net. He's a he's a 25 inch fish. He's a pretty good sized fish, especially on a light perch rod. And uh, when I got him up, it's kind of obscene to see a big fat catfish like that with something pink hanging out of his mouth. But uh, these silly catfish like those uh, pink tiger and pink and silver jigs that I've been using for the perch. So I don't care as long as they uh, give me some tugs. Here's another nice uh, two-footer catfish I caught on a on a uh, pink tiger whirly flig. Uh, got caught in the net on the way in, so I had a little trouble showing it off. But nice fish, 24 inches. A lot of fun on a light perch rod. This is out off the uh, area called the Kitty Condo. It's way out off Ingle Beach. A lot of catfish out there on the humps and bumps. But during this time of the year, the uh, perch and shad also move in there and so uh, using the same lures, the same bait, same, same techniques, you'll catch both shad and catfish and if you got no pride at all uh, uh, have fun with the catfish uh, keep them because they're good eating or throw them back and just keep the perch uh, this one also took something pink, this is a little pink ultramental jig pink tiger, uh, that works very good for all species in the lake uh, got another one out off the kitty condo coming in uh, this one was on a silver glitter uh, flag that I floated up off the bottom a little bit while I was going around searching for fish. Uh, catfish will sometimes hit the moving stuff better than the perch, but uh, not always. But uh, enjoy them when you can. That's that's a perch glitter flag, baited with a piece of metal, hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Got another catfish coming in on the perch rod. This one, uh, let's see, I think this one hit the uh, little bladed whirly, whirly jig like I was using back inside the marina to catch uh, both catfish and perch. Uh, fish are sure pretty this time of the year. They're nice and sleek, good color. And again, that's the same, uh, same jig that catches both perch and catfish uh, all over the lake this time of the year. Just be careful you don't get the spines. This is one coming in on a uh, chartreuse and red spotted uh, whirly flag uh, with some worm on it. And I've been catching perch on it. This is a little bit earlier in the season. They were still hitting the worms pretty good. So I've been catching perch on that. And uh, then a couple of catfish decided they liked it too. So again, if you got no pride, bring them on in. Okay, this is the last video segment of the whole video, uh, showing late in the year, uh, cold weather, water temperatures uh, under 40 degrees, poor catfish doesn't have enough energy to do much more than roll up in the line. It's a big cat, it's over 24 inches, but uh, hit the same jig that I've been using to catch, catch perch. I already had several nice perch in the basket, and uh, this was on the same uh, pink and pink and silver ultra minnow jig that I've been using to catch the perch. Now, if I didn't already have a lot of catfish fillets in the freezer, and if I didn't have perch in the basket, I probably would have kept this one. But as it was, uh, just brought him up to get my jig back, get my pretty pink and silver jig back. Now, I didn't kiss him, but I did release him. Uh, maybe next year when I come back he'll be a 10 pounder and I can have some more fun with him. But in the meantime, uh, sayonara and uh, have a good winter.
well, that about does it for the uh, the video. Uh, this is what I end up with on that day, a seven nice perch. Enough for my wife and I for dinner, and enough to keep me coming back for more in the future.